Today, I'm going to show you how to swap faces, and it's just not going to be in images. It's going to be in videos, too. How about that? Are you in here swapping faces? What do you mean? No, I'm not. Ah, away with you. I'm going to show you Face Fusion 2 point. Oh, let's get to it. Oh, and uh, I got a joke for you. A sheep, a drum and a snake fall off a cliff. Badum. Tss. Think about that one. So what I'm going to do today, I'm, I'm going to use this uh, detailed text guide with the pictures and everything that I have on Patreon for all my subscribers there. So I'm going to show you parts in the video. And if you want to delve much, much deeper, you can find the text guide in my Patreon in the links below. So that is uh, what we're gonna follow today. So we're gonna open a command window, like it says we're here. I'm gonna copy paste this one here. Just put that in. We're Git cloning the Face Fusion repository. That is done. It says in the guide, go into the newly created folder. We're doing that, CD Face Fusion. And then we're gonna start our virtual environment. We can copy paste that. And then the next one. So we're basically just copy pasting now from the guide. Python install pi. Then we're going to get some settings here. And since I have NVIDIA, I'm going to choose CUDA here and press enter. If you have AMD, you can choose ROCKM. And if not, you can use CPU. If you're not sure, just go with the default. I'm again selecting the CUDA here. Now where everything is collecting and downloading and installing, and that's going to take a couple of minutes. If you have supported Phase Fusion, you will have a gold edition install package that we can go through. If you don't, you're basically going to be finished with the install after this. Now the next step after this is installing the CUDA Cold Toolkit. So if you don't have that or the necessary NVIDIA drivers, you can get that here. If you have all the prerequisites installed already, you can run Phase Fusion now. If you have the gold edition, we're going to get to that in just a second. But you just run with Python run PI. And I'm again copy pasting that from the guide. It may take a little while to initialize, but once that's done, it's going to start downloading some files. So I'll just wait for that and catch up with you as soon as it's finished. Once you see this running on local URL, your face fusion has started and you can copy paste that and put that into a browser window. You're now running your face fusion. 2.0 the brand new face fusion now let's quickly take a step back and i'll show you how to install the gold edition it's just a simple plugin patch if you don't have that you can just skip forward a couple of seconds now if you're supported face fusion you're gonna have a gold package installer and just go into your folder and this is going to be in the guide as well and open the package and if you have Pinocchio and you're technically skilled you can use the JSON but if you don't just ignore that you can open this file take those two just drag and drop them into here we're gonna just copy them in here so now we have a gold edition folder and a gold file here next to our run and install files if you don't have your command prompt still open you can just click up here type cmd that will get you your terminal. You again need to activate the virtual environment, copy paste from the guide, or just check the video here. Then type Python gold PI. That will install the gold package. You can press with spacebar here to select the features that you want to install. I'm selecting all of them and then pressing enter. Now they have installed and we can go back to running Face Fusion like we did previously. That was by typing Python run pi or just copy paste from the guide it will again download some gold edition files but it's going to be fairly quick and once that's finished you will again see a link that you can copy paste into your browser and now you can see here face fusion 2.0 gold edition and with the gold edition you get some cool new features that we're going to look at in a bit now let's first check out how to use face fusion face fusion is an amazing face swapper that works even with video the cool thing is you can even use youtube video links just make sure you have all the rights and the copyright to use the videos that you want to play with same with all the faces and, and models so the first thing we're going to do here is change our output path now this isn't totally necessary but it's convenient if you want to know where all your results are being saved now it's just currently a local temp folder so we're just going to change this to our face fusion folder 
and I'm going to create an output folder here. For the top box here, we're going to load the face that uh, we want to use. And this is a picture of me. Lovely, isn't it? And then for the target here, this is where we're going to use picture of the people that we want to change. And this example here, I found just an image on Pexels. And you can quickly see here in our preview, that it has changed the leftmost person here with my face. And while I have the face selector mode set as at reference here, I can select then here which face is being swapped. So now I change to the woman here wearing the e-shirt. And if I, for example, press the, the guy to the right here, that face is going to be swapped. Now, if you instead choose many here, for example, you can see that it's trying to change all of these faces. All of these faces are now resembling my face. Zoom in here a little bit for you. You can now clearly see they are being swapped. Now, the quality of these swaps are going to be dependent on the face swap model. There are a couple of choose from. The ghost model here, they are available only with the gold package. The in swapper is a model by Insight Face, which is available for educational use only. The SIM swap and the SIM swap here is available in higher resolution, 256 and 512. The in swapper at the lower resolution, 128, is, however, in my opinion, better than the others, even at the lower resolution. So let's say, for example, we use the SIM swap here. You can still see that it works, but depending on the output you're looking for, you're gonna have to uh, see which model works best for you. Oh, and uh, by the way, remember also to change here your execution providers. Now it's only running with CPU because we didn't make any choices here. So if you have CUDA like me, you're just gonna press that. And if you have installed TensorRT, which is an advanced feature, you can click that as well. I don't have that installed currently. You're gonna have other options here if you're using AMD, for example. Now let's say that you're using a different picture. First, we need to uh, remove this one. We're just gonna drag the other one in here. So here we have a picture with a lot of faces and there are some options now when, when you have all these faces. So while you're using the face selector mode reference, you're gonna see all the faces here that have been detected in the scene. And this can be changed. First off, you have a face detector model. And here again, you have options. I would recommend using retina face because that's higher quality. Unit will be faster if you are on a slower machine. And the face detector score here, if you change this value, let's say we set this to zero, for example, you can see here now that a lot of faces here are being detected. So anything that kind of resembles a face, even this here doesn't even look like a face, be registered as a face. And if you set this to one, it will only show you faces that are clearly recognized as faces. And as you can see here, it is set too high, so none of the faces are actually registered. So the higher you set this, the more the model requires for a face to be detected. So let's say you set this to 0.7, for example, and now only high quality faces will be detected. So as you can see here, all of these characters are faces. You have one here that's behind some hair, but in general, these are faces. And like in the previous image, you can select with which face you want to select, or if you want to do many here, trying to change all the detected faces. As you can see, this face has changed, this one, this one, this one, is trying to change all the faces it detects. You can also select in which order these faces are detected, and the settings here. And we go into detail in Patreon guide. Just remember that this is just a preview, and if you want to fully finalize this image you're gonna have to use start down here which would start the render of your image now when pressing start it said select the file or directory for output path so let's make sure that our output path that we selected here actually exists we're just gonna go in a folder and create a new folder called output and now it has finished you can either go into your folder or download the image here now let's look at how to change a video so we're going to remove our image here and we're going to drop in a video. I found this scene of a man walking on pixels. So we're going to try to change this movie here. So we're going to take this and we're going to drag that into there. Now we'll get some new options. So first of all, you can see the preview with my face here and you have a trim frame start and a trim frame end. So that's basically how long this will run. So we're going to make it a little shorter. Let's do half of the video. Then you have more options to use from. Actually, you can use this even some of the still images, but this is especially good 
for the video. Now if you select the face debugger here and you change from the reference to one or many you will see that you get a little box here. You can see once you preview the frame here that you can also get little dots here for the eyes, the nose and the mouth and this is so you can see what you're doing with these tools here. So let's say for example that face would be changed a little bit too much to the right you're getting a lot of artifacts or blur here then you can change the face mask padding right see here that our box gets smaller maybe you want to keep the the chin here so you could get the bottom up a little bit like so so that way you can adapt more of what the face is being swapped and if you change the blur here you're going to change the blur get swapped into with the target face and that means you can also for example swap just half of the face which is uh, possible with this tool and the blur goes from the edges and inwards a good tip here is if you're not getting a great looking face afterwards you can use the face enhancer which will help with the quality of the face so you could use for example the gfp gan 1.4 use an, a face enhancer maybe 60% here which will smooth out the face a little afterwards so depending on how close you want it to be to the original you can play with this value here a higher value will give you a smoother face but less consistency with your source and a lower value will have more consistency with the source but may introduce more artifacts now a very popular face enhancer code former works great for still images but less good for video which is something to keep in mind. As you're doing a video, you might want to take a look at the settings here. So this is the max amount of memory you want to use for processing. I have 64 gigabytes, so you know I can set this quite high. Yeah, I don't have to, but let's say I set it like 40 or something. And a thread count here, you can is basically if you want your CPU to work harder, if you have a CPU that can handle a large thread count. In the guide, you will see comparisons between some of the different models and the different face enhancers and settings. So go check that out if you want more in detail and want to see what might be the best settings for your project. Once you have all the settings you want, you can just press start here and the video will start to render for you. As it's a video, it will be a lot of frames here, 197 frames. So this will take a little longer than just one image. But if you open your terminal, you can see the process. You can see here processing, 46%, 47, 48, 49. Now I'm just using a thread count of four. So I could be making this a little faster, but the GPU is doing a lot of the work in my case. Our video is now completed and we can see the results here. Now it's cropping a little bit of frame here. As you can see, my face is swapped fairly good. Just remember to remove this little box that we inputted actually. So just de-click the face debugger when you're prepared to finish so the preview frame will actually output what you see here now you can also target a url for video downloads and this is a gold package feature so i have taken one of my own videos because that is okay for me to use because i say i can use my own videos so i'm just going to press download here and it has started the process of my video and here we have one of my videos and it's actually trying to change my face with the face here because that's what uh, that's what's inputted. Let's see here. Let's find a frame that's uh, in the beginning here. So here we have. So if I remove the source here, which is my face, the original here. So if you just input something else, let's say this guy I found on Pixels. I'm gonna take that face, put that in there, and now it's trying to replace my face with this character here. Now it looks like we're gonna need to do a little bit of um, changes here. Maybe lower the face enhancer, even removing that fully, and we're getting a little closer to original so that's a cool way to use any video without having to download it first well it's actually downloading it but it just uh, you just target url here so that's really cool so i hope you learned something today as always have a good one see ya oh and change faces responsibly